photographers. In the last few weeks, I've reviewed both the Sony a6400 and the Fujifilm X-T30. Now, I said that they both fulfilled the promise of mirrorless, and they do, but which is better? I'm going to provide a detailed, feature-by-feature, function-by-function, side-by-side comparison so that you can see the difference and decide which is better for you. This did turn into a larger project than I anticipated, so I've divided it into two parts. Links to the second part, as well as my full reviews, are in the description below. And in this video, I'm going over the controls, exposure and color settings for shooting stills. There are links in the description to skip to a specific part. Now, in the second part, I'll cover video, as well as touch controls, focus settings, custom settings, and the menus. And I'm going to spoil this for you right now, because I'm not going to pick one. I'd be completely happy with either. There are too many differences and specific features where one or the other has the edge. Which is best for you will depend on what your needs are and what you intend to do. You're going to pick one. It's your money. But let me help you make that decision. Let's start with my three basics. Wallet. In April 2019, the A6400 is within 50 Canadian dollars of the X-T30. And honestly, they're both a little small for my hand, but that does make them light enough to carry and both fit easily in a small bag. The A6400 is a few grams heavier than the X-T30, and its monitor bridge makes the X-T30 a little taller. The A6400's grip and flip screen make it a little deeper. Now, on the X-T30, the on-off the on -off, shutter, exposure, shutter, and, exposure controls and focus controls are within easy, are reach. Within easy reach. And there are enough customizations customization to, to suit my preferences. Then heart. Well, I'm very fond of both brands. Maybe the X-T30 is a little more stylish, but that's my judgment. For the most part, I'm trying to stick to differences. If I don't mention it, it's probably the same. You'll find the full details in my full reviews. The A6400's on the left. I'll usually mention it first. The X-T30 on the right. No favoritism is suggested or implied. Although both are APS-C sized sensors, that is one of the big differences. Sony's sensor uses a traditional Bayer array with a top resolution of 6000 by 4000. Fujifilm's X-Trans sensor offers a marginally larger 6240 by 4160 resolution. The X-Trans array doesn't require an anti-aliasing filter and many feel it provides improved color purity. There are many sites that provide more detailed quality analysis I don't have the tools or the setup to do that properly. The camera's viewfinders have the same size and resolution. The A6400 is offset to the left. The X-T30 is centered over the lens. The A6400's diopter adjustment is minus 4 to plus 3. Specs are not given for the X-T30, but seems to be slightly less. Both can be adjusted enough for me to shoot without my glasses. The X-T30 has a view mode button to select the current mode. The A6400 offers these options in the menu. The X-T30's viewfinder and LCD rotate when you're shooting in portrait mode. The LCD screens are the same. The A640, with a 16x9 aspect, has a slightly lower resolution than the X-T30. The A6400's viewfinder LCD switch mode stops working when the screen is flipped up, a convenience I appreciate. Both have touchscreens. I'll cover that functionality in part two. The X-T30's articulation is the typical 90 up, 45 down. The A6400's flips down a little further and up all the way to face forward, a fairly significant advantage for selfies and vlogging. The A6400 has three control dials a mode dial, an unmarked dial on top, 
and the control circle dial. The four compass points on the dial access specific settings. The XT30 has five, drive mode, shutter speed, EV, as well as front and rear facing command dials. Many Fujifilm lenses have an aperture dial. In addition, the XT30 has a joystick used for menu navigation and focus point selection. The A6400's fun button opens an on-screen settings menu. The XT30's Q button opens the quick menu. Both have an integrated on-off shutter button. The XT30 has a screw mount for a release cable. The A6400 has an interesting and configurable switch and button combo for focus switch and lock. The XT30 has a manual focus mode selection switch, as well as dedicated exposure and focus lock buttons. The A6400 has specific key assignments for stills and video, controlling three buttons on the body and a fourth on the lens, if your lens is so configured. The X-T30 has four configurable controls and four swipe motions for the touch controls. The front and rear dials can also be customized. Sony's options include 89 assignable functions. The X-T30 offers 50 selections. And both have options not found on the respective menus. On the A6400, assignments include IAF and bright monitoring a unique Sony feature that can reveal objects in the dark while using manual focus. On the X-T30, hidden features include face selection. Both have a flash hot shoe. The A6400 uses Sony's multi-interface accessory shoe, which supports flashes as well as viewfinders and microphones. Both have a button to release the pop-up flash, the A6400's guide number is 6, the X-T30's is 7, that's likely different because of their different base ISOs. The A6400's can be manually tilted back to bounce. The A6400's mode dial has an auto position. On the X-T30, auto's a switch beside the shutter dial. Then program, aperture, shutter, and manual settings. The X-T30's configuration doesn't need a mode dial. Use the A position on the lens and the shutter dial, and the screen indicates program mode. Then adjust the shutter dial to enter shutter priority, and adjust the aperture and the cameras in manual mode. Set the shutter back to A for aperture priority. I prefer this simpler approach. The A6400 has a setting for scene mode. There are nine different scene types, and Sony includes details like switching to burst mode when sports is selected. The X-T30's 14 scene modes are integrated with the auto mode, but don't offer the same extended features. The A6400's mode dial and the X-T30's drive dial both offer a dedicated position for panoramas. Both work basically the same way. Choose a size and direction, and then pan across the image to have the panorama created in camera. The X-T30 has a multi-exposure mode, the A6400 has no equivalent. The A6400's movie setting is on the mode dial, the X-T30's on the drive dial. The A6400 has a dedicated video record button, the X-T30 uses the shutter to start and stop. Note that the A6400 can be customized to use the shutter to start and stop. The A6400 has a dial position for S and Q, the slow and fast settings for video. The frame rate for playback, called the record setting, has three options. The recording frame rate has eight, and this provides combinations ranging from 60 times fast to five times slow. On the X-T30, five slow settings from two to five times slow are available. Worth noting that on both cameras, these settings record HD 1080 footage without sound. On the X-T30, the drive dial also includes the continuous low and high settings. On the 6400, these are accessed from the dedicated drive position on the control dial, with low 3 frames, mid 6 frames, high 8 frames, and high plus 11 frames. The X-T30's low can be configured from 3 to 5 frames, high is 8 with the mechanical shutter. 
using the electronic shutter adds 10 and 20 frame modes, then with a 1.25 crop, 10, 20, or 30 frames. I tested with the highest quality JPEG using manual exposure, focus, and white balance. In the A6400's high burst, it takes 8 frames per second for 16 seconds, and then with the buffer full, it slows to about 4 per second. Switching to high plus, which compromises the display refresh, it captures 11 per second for 10 seconds before slowing. In both, the A6400 is very slow, watch the top left, to transfer the 86 frame buffer to the card. It's a process that can take up to 30 seconds. On the X-T30, again with full manual settings, note that there's space for 2,113 images. The 8-frame mechanical shutter setting takes 8 frames per second for about 40 seconds before the buffer fills. It then continues at about 5 per second. The buffer, judging by the remaining space display and the card activity LED, empties in about 10 seconds. But why is the number incrementing? With the 20 frame setting, the X-T30 captures 20 frames in the first second, 11 in the second, and then continues at 8 per second. It's silent, so you don't hear when it starts to slow. The crop 30 frame mode takes 25 images in the first second, then slows to about 10 per second. If you're wondering whether the A6400 might be faster with the silent shutter, it's not. The X-T30's drive dial includes two bracket settings. The A6400's brackets follow the burst mode. Exposure, white balance, and dynamic range are supported. The X-T30 includes exposure, ISO, film simulation, white balance, and focus. The A6400's exposure options range from 1 3rd to 3 EV, take up to 9 images up to 1 EV, 5 images for 2 and 3 EV. Continuous and manual brackets are set separately. The X-T30 also supports from 1 3rd to 3 stops, with 3, 5, 7, and 9 available for all, and a nice on-screen display of what you're about to do. There are specific options to bracket 2 and 3 frames up and down. Continuous and manual modes, there are 4 orders of sequence setting. The A6400's menu can set 2 bracket orders. The X-T30's Film Sim bracket can select the three you prefer. The X-T30's Focus bracket includes settings for the number of images and the focus step distance. An internal shot interval of zero shots will shoot in continuous mode. The X-T30's Drive dial includes two advanced filter options, which are selected in the menu. We'll return to these when we look at the color settings. Neither body is waterproof, neither includes in-body stabilization. Both have a single SD card slot in a bottom-mounted compartment shared with the battery. On the A6400, there's lots of room for a tripod quick release plate. Not so much on the X-T30, where it's also not quite centered under the lens. On the A6400, shooting settings are adjusted using the Fun menu, a customizable overlay that interactively shows you the settings you're adjusting. The X-T30's Q menu provides similar functionality, but you can't see the adjustment you're making. Although, using the menu, some are interactive. The A6400 provides a number of display screen options, selectable for the viewfinder, and for the LCD displays. On the X-T30, the display key cycles through a simple and full display option. The full display option can be extensively customized, so you can see the level and the histogram on the screen at the same time, or remove other icons and displays that don't give you joy. That's not possible with the A6400. They both support stills aspects of 3x2, 16x9 and square, and sizes large, medium and small. JPEG quality settings on the A6400 are standard, fine and extra fine, on the X-T30, normal and fine. The JPEG file size of this chart image with Sony's Extra Fine and Fujifilm's Fine is identical, 14.3 megabytes. Both can capture RAW files. The X-T30s are 14-bit with uncompressed and lossless compressed options. The A6400 are also 14-bit, but there's no uncompressed option. Both have a mechanical shutter. This is the A6400 with a one-second exposure. 
This is the X-T30 with a one second exposure. Sony's electronic shutter is called silent and the front curtain can optionally be set to mechanical. Full mechanical looks and sounds like this. The X-T30 does not have a setting to manage the front curtain, but does have a setting that transitions from mechanical to electronic as required by the shutter speed. The A6400 shutter speed ranges from 1 over 4000 to 30 seconds, bulb is available in manual. With the mechanical shutter, the X-T30 ranges from 1 over 4000 to 15 minutes, bulb to 60 minutes. With the electronic, shutter speeds up to 1 over 32,000 are available. The X-T30's flash sync is 1 over 180, the A6400 is 1 over 160. The A6400's ISO range for stills is 100 to 32,000, expanded reaches up to 102,400. The X-T30's ISO for stills can be set from 160 to 12,800, there are expanded low settings to 80, high to 51,200. Let's compare the images at ISO 6400. We'll have a look at 12,800. And finally, the extended mode at 51,200. On the A6400, auto ISO can be configured with a base and maximum. In the menu, the range can be limited. You won't be able to access any ISO settings outside the selected range and then the minimum shutter, which can be set to a specific value, but also alternates called fast and faster, slow and slower. With faster, a higher shutter is prioritized with a corresponding high ISO. Slower is the opposite. The X-T30 can set three auto ISO settings, each with a base value, a maximum ISO, and a minimum shutter. No auto speed settings. The A6400 has one more ISO option, available when RAW is off. Multi-frame NR, with both standard and high settings, captures multiple images to create a lower noise final image. In program mode, the A6400 has program shift for alternate settings. Use the control dial. Top left displays P star when you're done. The X-T30 has no equivalent. On the A6400, use the Fun menu to set the exposure compensation with a 5 stop plus and minus range. On the X-T30, use the dedicated EV top dial, which offers a 3 stop adjustment displayed screen left. In the C position, press the front dial to switch from ISO to make EV adjustments with a 5 stop limit. Although both have extensive customizations, let me go through the exposure settings when you're using manual. On the A6400, manual is selected using the mode dial. Use the fun menu to select the meter mode. Sony provides six options, two sizes of spot, and a useful highlight mode. The meter reading is displayed as a numerical value at the bottom of the screen. The screen display shows that you set the aperture AV with the top dial, set the shutter TV using the control circle. Press the right side of the control circle to set the ISO. To view the histogram, press DISP until it appears. However, it disappears while you're making adjustments. On the X-T30, manual mode isn't selected, it just happens. The meter mode, called photometry, is selectable only when face detect is off. The usual four settings. The meter reading displays screen left. Set the ISO using the front dial. The histogram remains on screen while adjustments are made. On the A6400, use the fun menu to set the white balance, 10 presets, Kelvin from 2500 to 9900 in 100 step increments, three custom settings which are easily captured and confirmed. Each has a panel to fine tune amber blue or green magenta, seven steps in each direction. The X-T30's white balance appears with a touch swipe. Seven presets, Kelvin from 2500 to 10,000, here with greater granularity at the low end and lesser granularity at higher settings. Three easy to capture custom settings. The amber blue and green magenta settings have nine steps. Back to the A6400 for priority set. 
For lower light settings, the auto reading can favor the natural ambience, which will be warmer, over a cooler white setting. The A6400 has a shutter auto white balance lock setting, no equivalent on the X-T30. It's somewhat unfair to compare Sony's creative style color controls with Fujifilm's film simulations. Sony provides a bunch of presets tuned for specific image types. There are fine tuning controls to adjust contrast, saturation, and sharpness. Fujifilm's film simulations emulate the characteristics of classic analog film types, which provides both more, for example, there are two black and white options, each with color filters to modify the response, and then a setting to fine tune the effect to amber or blue. There are general settings to adjust the highlight and shadow response and modify the saturation and sharpness. But also less. For example, there's no equivalent to Sony's neutral or portrait setting. So, using Anne as a reference for a white skin tone and with auto white balance, this is standard compared to Provia, neutral compared to classic Chrome, and portrait compared to Astia. Color science is very subjective, so I'm going to stay out of this. The images are on Flickr. There's a link in the description. My observation is that using the controls, you can probably create custom settings to make a pretty close match if that's your desire. The A6400's picture effects, there are 13 with variations, provide filters to enhance your images. I do enjoy shooting with HDR painting, watercolor, and illustration. Sadly, when using these, raw files are not saved. The X-T30 has eight effects with variations. Here, raw files are available, so if you want to save the original unaffected file, you can. I find pop color and dynamic tone to be the most interesting here. The A6400 also has Sony's picture profiles, which provide an unbelievable control set to manage the sensor's output. They can be used in both stills and video modes. Here is where you'll find Sony's gamma controls, useful for all, but primarily designed for video. The settings here are pro and broadcast level options, offering a range of settings and adjustments I can't fully appreciate. The benefit of the gamma settings is an extended dynamic range. The dynamic range for video can be measured using the DSC Lab Xylochart. With profiles off, I can see on a waveform monitor that the A6400 captures a range of 8 stops. When I switch to S-Log2, that increases to 10 stops and 11 with S-Log3. The X-T30 provides F-Log, a single video specific setting, which also extends the dynamic range. I measured 10 stops. Fujifilm provides downloadable files, called lookup tables, to manage F-Log recordings. While there are lots of lookup tables available for S-Log, Sony does not provide a reference lookup table. The X-T30 includes settings to set the grain in an image, and a setting which enhances color in low-light scenes. The A6400 has a soft skin effect. On the A6400, the dynamic range optimizer can be set to five levels as well as auto. With raw off, an auto HDR mode can be set for up to six EV and auto. Sony does save a second DR off JPEG for the auto HDR modes. The images, DRO auto, level five, HDR auto, and HDR6EV show the results of using these adjustments. The X-T30's dynamic range settings, 100, 200, 400, and auto, are dependent on the ISO. Under ISO 320, only 100 is available. 400 is available from 640 and up. An alternate method, dynamic range priority, offers three settings. Raw files are available with all of these options. The images, DRO Auto, DR400, Range Priority Auto, and Strong, show the results you can expect. For lenses, 
The selection of E-mount lenses from Sony and third parties range the spectrum in quality and capability. And that's before using the adapters which are available to make nearly every other lens compatible. But Sony's best lenses are the excellent and expensive full-frame versions. Fuji's X-mount maxes to APS-C crop, which means that their best are typically smaller and less expensive. And since the launch of the X-mount, Fujifilm has provided a considerable collection, including some great primes, as well as quality cinema lenses in the MKX series. So that's it for part one. Part two continues with video, focus, and more. If there's something I've missed, or you have relevant questions or civil comments, I do read and reply to all comments. Until then, keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, please subscribe. Thanks.